you're here because you want to learn how to make a string quilt. When you quilt a string quilt, you don't have to use two and a half inches. You can use any size you want. But for this video, I'm going to use two and a half inches of fabric because they generally the lengths that they come when you do a jelly roll. And I'm going to be using a lot of my scraps. So I'm going to be using one of my rulers in order to cut my two and a half inch sections. Now I am going to have a guide section and this guide section, I am going to decide to use orange so it stands out and I'm not going to use any other orange in the rest of my blocks. So I'm just going to use this orange. You can choose to use white, black, whatever colour. I just think that this helps as a guide for later on and you'll see why. I have a lot of blue scraps for making my string quilt so I need to get everybody cut two two and a half inches. So it doesn't matter what sizes we have you could do it on a full um, yardage, yardage of fabric or you could take your scraps and as before like I said I have a ton of scraps that need using up so I'm going to make it very scrappy looking. Now I have this ruler it's called the Stripology ruler I'm not paid or sponsored to create this particular video I'm just showing you the ruler because I think it's pretty neat. So first of all I want to take my first cut because I want to make everybody straight like so. Now the thing about this ruler is it has a load of holes that your rotary cutter goes inside of and you can cut strips of one and a half inch and two and a half inch and you can also square the quilt up later with it. So I'll show you that a little bit later. So let's start with cutting our strips. And on the ruler it has these special guides so you don't have to keep on eyeballing where your two and a half inches is because it shows you with the square and the stars so I know exactly where to cut in order to do my two and a half inches. So once I find my markings I get my rotary cutter in the slot and then I just cut, find my other square, cut, find my other square, cut, find my other square and cut. So it's going to make this string quilt really quick and easy to do. And here are my two and a half inch strips. Later on, we are going to be cutting our string quilt into diagonals. And in order to make this easier on our quilting, we are going to use a foundation piece on the bottom as we are sewing. So this is just regular tracing paper from a art and craft store. I find it to be more reasonable than um, a fabric store. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut so my end quilt sections for my string quilt are going to be at 10 inches square like a layer cake and I'm going to make my paper pieces to be 11 inches in square. So just so you know I have used regular just copy paper whenever I have done my foundation paper piece in. Just make sure that it's not like a premium quality paper where it's like super duper thick. Make sure it's like the cheaper paper so you can tear it away really easily. The thing with using the tracing paper is that once we tear it away it's going to tear away so easy. Cut as many of these pieces of paper that you need. There are so many references online about how big certain quilt sizes are so you're going to cut as many as you need for your particular size of quilt. We're going to take our first piece of fabric and remember we're going to have a guider. So my guider is orange, it's bright orange and I can't mistake it. And I'm going to line my bright orange piece to the corner of one of my sections. So we're going to put him right on the corner and that is an important step so please don't miss that out. And then I'm going to get another section of fabric and lay that right sides down. So here we go, we've got the bright orange leader, I'm going to call him a leader and then I'm going to put my other piece right sides down. So if your leader had a pattern on it, the pattern would be facing up. So you've got both sections facing down and then I am going to sew up along here. 
so whatever you feel comfortable with you can pin this down or what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carry this over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew this into place so here we go here's my sewing machine i am literally going to keep it on a straight stitch um great thing about the sewing machine is it tells me exactly which foot to have on however i do have my quarter of an inch foot with guide on because it's like the best foot ever it has a little guide and it keeps everything straight and this is what it looks like it has a nice little guide so you can pop your fabric in there and keep your quarter of an inch seam I always place a 9014 Microtex needle into my sewing machine whenever I'm sewing with cotton and any kind of quilting. So I want to keep my leader, the orange fabric, to the corner of this square. And then I'm going to attach these two together into place. So it's going to get attached on top of this paper that we're using. Now if you've ever done foundation paper piecing, it's pretty much going to be the same thing. So you're just going to open this up and you were going to press this fabric down and then we're going to work on these both sides and work out. So when I tell you to have it in the corner of the section here, I want you to make sure that you have it in the corner like so. So you can have it in the corner at the top and also you're going to have it in the corner at the bottom and this is going to make for a much better design so don't get too kind of stressed out about it but kind of make sure that it's almost to the corner because I make a little bit of a mistake in one of my squares later on and you will see that if you have these large sections here coming off the edge of the paper just give them a cut because we don't need them anymore and let's start working on the next piece. So I'm going to work on the other side of this orange section. I'm going to put the next section down. And it's only just going to fit. And I'm going to sew that into place. Remember, you're going right sides together. So if you do have a pattern, they need to be right sides together. And then we're going to sew it into place. Open that section up and press and then get another section to go on the other side. I'm going to build this one with you guys. I have my next piece ready to go so I'm going to put these right sides together and we are going to sew and flip. So continue on and build and flip and finish this block off. So you're going to have something that looks like this and don't worry if you have like a little bit of paper showing here remember we cut this piece of paper to an 11 inch block and i'm going to cut these down to 10 inches so we don't need to waste our time with this little piece here so let's start by squaring this string quilt up okay so you do need to be concentrating for this next step because i made a couple of errors so this guy here was my leader and he's supposed to be at the corner here and he's not there. So that was one of my errors and also another one was I cut it like this. Now that's pointless isn't it because we could easily do this square without all the effort that we've just done. So this is how we are going to create the string quilt correctly. First of all, don't try and cut it this way because we already know that we have a square on the back and it's just easier. So we're going to flip it over and we can see our square on the back. I have my ruler back again and as you can see it goes all the way to a 12 inch square and as small as a 3 inch square and it also has my degree angle so it's got my, six, uh, my 45 degree angle and also my 60 degree angle and I am going to cut this to a 10 inch block. Here we go, we already have our corner angle with our orange section, our guide piece 
and I'm going to place my ruler right up to that because I already know that this tracing paper that I originally did is an 11 inch square so I am going to cut it now down to a 10 inch square and then all you're going to do is just start cutting so I have 10 here and the zero here it's my iron and then I'm just going to turn my whole fabric around and make sure that that 45 degree line is going straight through the middle of that orange section so you see how this guide piece makes it super easy to make this string quilt so I'm just going to cut this and I'm going to cut this here And then we're just going to turn this over and we're going to cut or tear this off at the back. This is really easy, comes away so simply. So I'm going to go ahead and sew some more of these together so you get a feel of what this is going to look like overall in the bigger picture. You kind of want to be mindful where that orange guider piece is going. You really do want to make sure that it's almost like dead on. Like don't be like totally anal about it, but try to make sure that that first orange section is to the corner of your square. And then the overall look of your block is going to look awesome. All that's left to do is to sew these sections into place. So you could have a shape that looks like this. Or you could have a shape that looks like this and then you just build from there and make your quilt as big or as small as you'd like. Obviously you don't just want to stop at four squares like I have, you want to keep going and make that look absolutely amazing with that pop of that orange colour. To quilt this, this is just regular easy sewing, you would just put these two right sides together and we sew down these. And then sew the two sections at the top here and then you would join these two pieces together so I've placed these two right sides together and sew straight down. So I want to point something out to you guys and you're probably staring at it right now and that's this block here. If you notice the orange line is pretty perfect going around these three blocks but on this block it isn't and that's because I didn't make sure that this orange strip was correctly down the corner of the square foundation paper piece that I did. So when you're doing this particular quilt, this string quilt, you have to make sure that this is pretty much going down a corner of one of them squares. Because if you look at all of my other corners, they are absolutely perfect, but this one has just been thrown off. So I could either live with it or I could take it off and I could redo it. So just be mindful, your leader needs to go to the corner of one of your corners and when you're cutting it, just make sure you're at that 45 degree diagonal. Other than that, it's a perfect block. I hope you've enjoyed watching making this string quilt and you can see how easy and quickly it's going to pan out for you. It's going to really come along very quickly. If you found this video useful, it really helps me when you click that like button and it also helps people like you find me. I create videos every single Wednesday so don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys!